we'll take a few minutes for any questions or comments. Um, again, we want everybody to think about your professional experiences that you're going through with the students you're working with, the parents that you're working with. Um, any comments for Professor Blanco? We'll take about five minutes because um, we're a bit, a bit late, but um, I want to give everybody up to you. Go ahead and stand up, and if you need the microphone, they're, they're set up. I can be pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> we all get her. <laughs> you spoke a lot, and in this particular slide, we can see uh, the connection, this, this brain circulation, education and health care, and in entrepreneurship, what about in basic education? What most of us are involved with, elementary, secondary education, what kind of connections can be made? Well, that's the kind of ideas that I would like you to brainstorm and, you know, and provide us and provide yourself. Uh, because I do believe that this can be a productive session from which uh, we may you know, identify initiatives that we can then suggest to, to the system, to the public education system. But one basic thing, for example, English as second language. Uh, that's, you know, today, you know, it, it's, Forget about the political, you know, explanation of the of the left. You know, if it's a, I remember in Cuba they, they used to tell me, I, I, <laughs> I used to be, you know, I don't I don't look like it now. I am bald and everything else. But I used to be a rock singer in my time, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, I used to sing in English, you know, and uh, I was accused of singing in the language of the imperialist, right? But now English is very important. I mean, everything is in English. It has become, de facto, the, the international way of communicating ideas. Uh, particularly if you are in the technical area, if you want to understand a handbook uh, for your computer or a handbook for your Toyota, I mean, you're not going to read the Japanese uh, handbook. You, you read the English, right? And uh, so that is one area, for example. That uh, that you know it, it's taught in the in the high schools, it's taught in, in primary schools for migrants that arrive, and uh, and that could be very useful. Miami Dade College now has been requested to teach English as second language in Haiti, and I think that that, that could also be very helpful. But you know I I am going to return the ball to your court, and uh, I would love to hear your your ideas on this. Honestly, I don't have a fear with me, but I can tell you that uh, if I remember well, it's a significant amount, particularly in comparison to the GDP, to the, to the, to the economy of Haiti. It's about yeah. $1.3 billion. $1.3 and $1.6 billion. There you go. Uh, no, I no what no. Is now up to two years ago, it wasn't taxed. Uh -huh. Now it is. Yeah. One of the things he's done was to tax it before you even get the money out. They have a tax right. That's I, a new I, policy I, with the new president. I, I, I would see that because if, if you're talking about a billion dollars being sent back, at you know at some point somebody's eyes are going to be on that and start it because yeah. um, as you mentioned earlier, that if you are. Um, Creating a product here, and then uh, just like if you say that you had a doctor and you put yeah. money into it and you send it back, now you're losing. I could see them now saying, "Okay, this is my product, and I'm now losing on it because now you're sending it there and I'm not taxing you on it." Although I guess I'm, I'm also assuming that when you purchased it, you you taxed it. But it seems like again, when you send it over again, now you get taxed on it again. And a billion dollars been sent <coughs> somewhere else, and you're using some form of uh, <coughs> or the uh, transference of it or picking it up like through Western Union or whatever you're using to transfer it. I could see at some point, again, in the last two or three years that that, that has, you know, now a tax is being put on there. The more than the government has begun to tax it about a year and a half to year. There you see again, you know, that <laughs> the governments, probably 
I'm not going to say with bad intention, perhaps with the best intention, but they think old fashioned. They think, uh, okay, there's a lot of money moving here, I need some of that money. Because you know, the, people should not be egoistical and, and just get the money and for, their, for their families, for themselves. We need some money to spread around in social programs. Let's look at that, you know, with that, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say they're they trying to do good with it. The problem is that if you tax something too much, the flow goes down. The flow goes down. So, you know, there, there is some, I think, you know, I, I am not condemning this or that. I'm saying that we are, as I said before, we are in a period of rapid changes. And change is, is ahead of us. We're still thinking the old way when we are dealing with the new reality. And we're trying to understand the new reality with our old paradigms, our old perspectives. And uh, it's going to take some time to find the right effective way of you know spreading wealth around without punishing the people that are sending the money there are there are numbers of, of uh, social remittances philanthropic remittances for example the mexicans i don't know if anyone here in the room is acquainted with that they have a program called three by one uh, in Zacatecas, one province. I think that there are more Zacatecans in California than in Zacatecas. Uh, and that helps them. But that, that's a problem because, you know, it's a poor uh, area, in, a very poor area in, in, um, in Mexico. And then, you know, the, the Zacatecas that are living abroad were sending money, remittances, back to their families. But at one point they, find, they found out that that was not enough to make them prosper. That they needed, for example, okay, I can send you money, I can send money to my family and they will buy tacos with that and you know, whatever they need, clothes or whatever, but that's not gonna fix the running water. Uh, that's not gonna fix, I don't know, even the chapel of the, of the, uh, of the town. There is an area of tension there because the governments can easily become lazy in their responsibility to provide services and say, you know what? You know, these guys can do it themselves. You know, we don't have to fix the, the aqueducts. We don't have to fix uh, running water. Let's, let's allow them to do it, right? So there is a little bit, there's a trickery uh, area in, in that, but the, the thing is that the Zacatecas started a program saying, okay, let's say I'm going to send my $20, $50, $100 to my family every month. But besides that, I'm going to put $1 in a common fund for social development. And they started to negotiate the hometowns associations in the United States, the Zacatecas hometown associations in the United States started to negotiate with the government of a province. And they asked them, okay, if we put one dollar, would you match every dollar that we put in that fund with one dollar of the provincial government? And they said yes. And then they went to the federal government of Mexico. And they said, okay, for every dollar that the Zacatecas abroad sent in or, and, the, and the government, of a, of a province put in, would you put one dollar? And the federal government committed to put one dollar. That's why it's three, I mean, two by one was then. Then the international agencies came in and said, you know what? If you really make that work, we're gonna put a dollar to you and we're gonna match that money. And now they have, you know, this program going. I'm not saying it's the best in the world, but it's creative is an interesting way, a different approach to spreading, you know, prosperity and wealth around, which is not only, uh, you know, your remittance to your family. And it's not, you know, let me tax this guy with 20% of whatever for every dollar he sends, because that would diminish the, the flow. And people would start using other ways, you know. <laughs> every, again, they will walk on the grass. 
you know, you're going to tax me? Okay, I send a mule, you know, with the money. I'm not going to be sending it through Western Union. I'm going to send somebody out there, and these people are going to be doing the money, making the money. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think, you know, like um, for our teachers that have come here today, you know, uh, I guess, you know, our focus a lot of times, we said this was an African American history workshop, we said another, because my dear friend here asked me, and I was like, you know, it's the diet, you know, it's, it's everyone, it's the diversity of it. Right. Because one of the things I do want to share is that um, I think you enlightened us or uh, made us aware of things that sometimes, and when we leave workshops, uh, that, that we have an awakening or something new. And one of the things I was, wasn't really thinking of is talking about just the economy and when, you know, like when you use the example of uh, the barber shears or whatever, and people uh, making money off of that or sending it back to our countries and, and making sure that we're taking care of everyone. But that brought to mind, there's a, also an organization that's called Soul Purpose. And it's S-O-L-E, it's talking about purpose and shoes for those, those children that are living in uh, uh, that, get diseases because they don't have shoes. And um, it was uh, 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 an African gentleman that he has a program called Soul Purposes. He wrote a book and it's called 10 by 10 by 10. And what he's doing is 10 million shoes in 10 years for 10 million people. And um, just thinking about that, I just think today you know, what you were talking about talks about how we really need to give back to those that we a lot of times forget about, even if it's in our communities. You know, that we don't take care of those that, you know, people that don't have. And so I just thank you on today for really just waking that up in us and, and talking about how we have to also think about other people that, you know, that we go through our daily lives and just not thinking about those that don't have. And when I think about people that get diseases because they don't have a pair of shoes, it just really, you know, lets us know how we are in dire straits and it's important for our children that we pass this on to them in our classrooms and telling them the importance of giving back to our own people and other people that don't have. So I just want to say thank you for uh, thank you. inviting us and bringing that awareness to us on the day. Thank you. It really shed a lot of light for some things that I did not know about uh, Cuba. So thank you. Thank you. All right.